Welcome back to The Line. Last week we talked about a ruling handed down by Judge Sarah Singleton that New Mexico is not adequately funding schools and meeting all the needs of students. The state's public education department said it will appeal the judge's decision and many supporters of the ruling, however, are against the appeal, even though it will take a lot of work and money to implement the reforms to the state's education system. And Dan, the Santa Fe Public Schools Superintendent Veronica Garcia, let me read you her quote. She wants PED to get right on this, saying, I beg decision makers in our state to not politicize this. Please do the right thing by our children. Let's not waste precious fiscal and human resources on appeals. That's very interesting she, for a woman who, who tends to not get in the mix early, if you, if you get my drift. Well, she's trying to lay down a marker here, it seems like. Is it, is it going to work? Is the legislature going to hear this and just move forward and do the right thing here? So um, it's interesting. So this conversation is, there's kind of three levels of this conversation, right? Okay. The conversation is, one, who's really at fault here? Conversation two is, you know, how do you come up with the money? Mm -hmm. And conversation three, uh, the most important one that, that, that I'm, I'm going to touch on first, is the constitutionality of this. I mean, okay. the courts are not in the funding business. Mm -hmm. That's not what they do. What they do is they interpret the law. When they decide that they don't like a program, going back, if, the, if you know, I know that the, uh, uh, Congresswoman Grisham has said she would not continue to mm -hmm. fight on this, mm -hmm. um, they need to fight this. Not, it has zero to do with the merits of the issue. It has to do with who's going to be in charge with funding the state of New Mexico. We have a very specific and clear directive in the New Mexico state constitution. The legislature creates the budget, mm -hmm. the legislature passes a budget, sends it to the governor, the governor signs it. Period. It's not the purview of the courts to come in and say, well, we don't like something, so go put more money into it. This whole thing is askew for a couple of reasons. One of them is we've never spent less on education in New Mexico. Every year it's gone up more mm -hmm. than it was the prior year. It is the single largest driver in the budget. It's the single largest expenditure in the budget. So, you know, we hear the talk right now, there's a lot of talk out there about, well, we got oil and gas money, right? Mm -hmm. That's a great conversation piece. Those are not recurring revenues. Mm -hmm. When you fix this, this is a recurring problem. So if you're gonna try to address this, you're going to have to go to where recurring revenue is and figure out a way to address it with recurring revenue. So are we going to cut Medicaid? Are we going to cut other programs? Mm -hmm. And more importantly, this stems back to an early decision mm -hmm. uh, that, that happened, I think, in the late 80s, early 90s, where the school boards sued the legislature and said, listen, you guys don't get to tell us how to spend the money. You mm -hmm. get to give it to us and we figure out what to do with it. I mean, let me stop you there because I, I think you're making an excellent point there that about who gets to do what. But Rachel, let me ask you this. Is Judge Singleton actually directing anybody to do any money here? I mean, she is in a sense, but do you know what I'm saying? She's not saying spend this amount by this amount of time right. or whatever. Do you see what I mean? It, so it's going to bounce back to where Dan wants it eventually, isn't it, to the legislature? And they're going to have to decide how to spend this money? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, what the judge is saying is this system is failing and right. you've got to fix it. Mm -hmm. The how is going to be, you know, determined by our uh, leaders in right. the state. But right. um, the judge is unequivocal in this. And the bottom line is we're going to have to fix the deficits in our education system mm -hmm. in order to move forward as a state. Mm -hmm. Our state is incredibly diverse. That is a strength. We mm -hmm. need to be building on that for our future. We now have a finding that our educational system is not serving all of our diverse populations. If we don't change that, right. there's no way we're going to be able to move forward as a right. state. Interesting opportunity when you think about it, Marco, isn't it? If you're on the education side mm -hmm. of this, this I could see people on you know the education business saying this is exactly what we needed: an aggressive timeline, um, no stone unturned, and who gets served here with this kind of money? You see where I'm going here? For a lot of folks, this could be the exact thing they want to get this whole thing moving forward. Well, ever since I've been growing up, you know, mm -hmm. Gene, uh, education is the key to success. Right. And education here in New Mexico is how students will grow up to become you know prosperous people to help you know build the economy and help build you know society as mm -hmm. a whole this is the next generation is what we're focusing on mm -hmm. I believe that you know as a student myself that focusing on our education is the most important thing that we should be doing mm -hmm. I do understand that you know spending a lot of money and cutting other programs is one of those other things that could possibly happen because of this however though I feel like if we focus and create that system that timeline and we have a something that actually works mm -hmm. and we plan it out and we get people who can enforce that timeline in a well, you know, succinct manner, I think this could possibly work. This feels mm -hmm. doable to you. Yeah. It really does. An aggressive timeline, the mm -hmm. amount of money we're going to have to spend, it feels like we, this is the moment we should, should do this? I think we should yeah. because I think it's the students, if we get them when they're younger, mm -hmm. we can help them learn, we can help, you know, encourage them to learn and become better students. That's right. I think 
that you know they'll be able to be able to read by third grade. That'll increase their likelihood to graduate mm -hmm. in college or high school. Then they'll possibly move on to college too. You know they'll be coming back to New Mexico and helping our systems grow more and more. That's right. So You're playing a long game, I like that. That's yeah. that's the way it has to go. Um, teacher pay, Laura, has to be part of this conversation. There's no doubt. And you know what Dan laid out earlier, he represents a, a part of our state that's legit, and people have an issue with spending more money with education and stuff like that. Is teacher pay going to be the fight that stops this whole thing? It, this is what worries me, because this is the thing that we can't quite get our arms around. Should it be part of this discussion, or is that a separate discussion to you completely? No, I think this is part of the discussion as well. I mean, mm -hmm. all resources, as far as schools are concerned, are part of this. And I should add that uh, my law firm where I work was actually one of the firms that represented some of the parties in this uh, on the plaintiff side. Okay. They represented three of the school districts that were involved mm -hmm. in this case. And it was a case that started in 2014 is when it was filed. I mean, they have thousands and thousands of, um, uh, of pieces of evidence, um, a lot mm -hmm. of deposition. Wow. I mean, it was a very, very long and very significant case. Mm -hmm. A lot of plaintiffs involved, individuals and school districts. And so I think that this is really, um, I mean, it's such a huge issue um, for mm -hmm. New Mexico. And if you look at sort of how New Mexico has developed over the last, um, I don't know, I would say probably the last three decades, I mean, yes, there's been an increase in the amount of funding, but overall as a percentage of what the schools actually get, it has not been any more. Nice. In fact, in some ways it has been less because the actual um, numbers of students has increased. Gotcha. So it's been a strained system. And mm -hmm. so even though dollar amount, the aggregate amount has increased, the need has been unmet. And I think that's what this case really says. Mm -hmm. And it addresses four very important and vulnerable um, demographics. It's dis disabled people with disabilities, mm -hmm. students with disabilities, Native Americans, English language learners, as well as those who are um, in poverty, that's people right. who are in lower income. Yep. And I mean, one of the statistics was that 70, over 70%, I think it was 71% of students in uh, public schools in New Mexico are actually in lo lower income. Mm. And that's a very large, um, vulnerable population. And when you look at the opportunities that education provides to be able to change that, mm -hmm. it really means changing New Mexico altogether mm -hmm. in, in terms of making us more competitive, um, making, uh, making our students ready for uh, jobs ready to be able to compete, ready to just be responsible citizens. That's right. You know, we see a lot of crime, and we're always talking about crime in Albuquerque and in New Mexico. Um, a lot of issues right. with that, a lot of That's issues right. with child abuse. You know, having a more educated populace is going to make a huge mm -hmm. difference, and this is really where that. Do, do you see going. this as a starting gun to something better? The question I asked Marco a second ago. Again, I have to say, if I was in the education business, I would be thrilled with this situation, the aggressive timeline, the whole thing. Well, Are you yes. as optimistic? Uh, I think mm -hmm. that it does. I mean, it, it's something very significant that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And it will be up to the legislature to figure out what to do about this. And I think it's going to be a huge part of the next session. Mm -hmm. It's also going to be really important to whoever gets elected to governor to have some leadership under this. And I, I think part of the problem that we've seen over the, in the last administration is just constant... Um, you know, constant fighting between the legislative branch and the administration right. um, in terms of, you know, figuring out how to fund, what to do with park, what to do with teacher pay. I mean, it's just been like a constant fight. That's right. And to the point That's where right. the administration's secretary wasn't even, um, you know, for years or, confirmed. Right. confirmed. <laughs> right. And then the current one is still a designee and, and is not confirmed. So right. I, I hope that in the next administration mm -hmm. um, that there's, a, a, basically people rope their sleeves don't take to the partisan corners and actually try to figure out how to address this issue because it's a pretty significant one. You know, it's, Gene, we, you know, everybody is discounting the fact that we have one of the most progressive funding formulas for schools in the nation. Mm -hmm. We've been a model for other states. We take into account in the funding formula income, rural areas, amount of time the kids have to go to school. We take in whether they're failing schools or passing, or, or passing schools. Mm -hmm. All this stuff currently exists in the current funding formula. This is just another that's example. That's why the judge didn't say that the that's, funding formula itself should that's be right. overturned. But the funding formula is how we fund the schools. Mm -hmm. This is just another example of people not liking the way the policies are decided. So they're going to go to a court. The court's going to mandate something and we're going to screw up the entire funding formula. Well, and it's but, not unlike the but, last mm -hmm. situation that we talked mm -hmm. about. I mean, with the, with the seizure of cars. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the court is there to determine whether something has been done inappropriately. It's a check on the other two branches of government. I think in this case it worked. Right. And I think the judge, if you look at the 75-page decision. This is a policy page, decision. If you look at the 75-page decision, she was very thoughtful in terms of determining where her limits were. I mean, the plaintiffs right. in some way, some of the plaintiffs were pushing her to be even more specific about uh. how to instruct the legislature. I think, and she recognizes in the decision that that would be going too far. That would be legislating from the bench. What she does is she, she considers what constitutes 
constitutionally what the obligations are. Right. And if you read the decision, it actually gives a very good history of the way that these kinds of cases have developed around the country. We're not alone. I mean, right. there's many other states that have That's developed right. this way. And really, she talks about how we're now in a third wave of these kinds of cases. The first wave that occurred had to do with um, making legal challenges with regard to um, equal protection clauses mm -hmm. in state constitutions. Mm -hmm. The second wave had to do with doing um, similar but equity type of arguments. It's similar to the um, equal protections, but it was on an equity ground, mm -hmm. meaning that students in one district should be treated just like students in another district. This one is, is a little bit more sort of a deeper take on the constitutional issue, um, and specifically, are is the service that's being provided to students adequate? Mm -hmm. So the, the question here was around adequacy. And that's gotcha. local, right. And that's, and that's, right. And that's, that's the, that's the tricky failure. word that's there. That's the failure in the judge's ru ruling, in my opinion, because mm -hmm. whether the, the services are being provided adequately is a local district decision that they fought to be able to make. And to turn around and say that we're going to revamp the entire system because certain school districts aren't doing what they need to do to address their let me, let me, let me is a failure. And, and hold on, Gene. And hold on, I mean, we no, get to wrap up here on, real quick. At the end, mm -hmm. we have a retiring judge, pro tem judge, who f lobs in this massive policy decision legislation and literally is going to take away the funding mechanism and the way that this state has operated, which is actually operated, like I said on the funding formula, has been pro has been a progressive I, I, one. I hear you. And they're going to change you. it. However, and at the end of the day, you don't have the money. And this is just another, it's like well, we're gonna have, we're, I, I got to get out, honestly. We got to find the money. That's what the judge is saying. Yeah, you gotta, but you what happens the if the appeal is year? lost? You want to find the I mean, this appeal is going to go on like everything is going on, depending on who fights it. We'll have to end that there. Right now, next, I sit down with former UNM President Chowki Abdallah to talk about what's next in his career.